this is really a super easy recipe and you can add vegetables that you have on hand and peppers that you have on hand even. Um, the main ingredient is the cabbage. This is the size cabbage I'm gonna use. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll end up chopping this up and rinsing it off. Um, the peppers I'm using today are actually left over from the garden. I could eat these just straight up. This is gonna be a fun addition to the soup recipe. I also have one of my favorite sweet onions. These have been super good this season. I'm gonna chop that up. I have celery that's gonna be diced up. And my carrots, I use, I use this old fashioned gizmo here and I can show you how to use that if you're not familiar with those. I also pulled about a little over a cup or a little over a half a cup of green beans out of the freezer just because my husband loves those and that will be a nice addition. And for the broth, I use a, a bouillon that I have on hand. So I'm gonna be using that instead of a chicken broth that you would buy in a carton at the store. Uh, use what you have on hand, that's the main thing with cooking any recipe, really. All right, so we're gonna go ahead. I am using my power pressure. I feel like a commercial, but I love this thing. I've had this thing since 2000. Boy, when did I get this? 2015, 16 maybe? I use it all the time. In fact, it's like a permanent staple in my kitchen along with my air fryer. <laughs> in fact, I use this more than I do any containers um, on my stovetop. So what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna set this, it has a chicken setting and what that does is heat up this pan in here i'm going to add my olive oil here so we can do some sauteing here we go for this video i'm actually going to put some of the rotisserie chicken i have on hand a bit of it or use it in meals for that week so this is going to actually i'm going to take the skin off and chop this up and put this in the cabbage soup all right i had to switch knives so i could cut my arm off of that thing it's huge and sharp i like using steak knives believe it or not so i went ahead and i diced up the onions and the uh oil about roughly two tablespoons is already in the pan uh, while the pressure cooker is on the chicken setting and once that gets to heat it actually gives you about 15 minutes to get down what you need to get done so I'm gonna go ahead and add the diced onions to this so I can saute them in they go Oliver in they go and we're just gonna let those get nice and soft and they get kind of translucent a little bit but before that happens, I'm actually going to put my celery and the carrots in there. So I'm cheating a little bit today, and I'm actually using store-bought store celery that you find in the produce department. And um, I actually grow celery here, but I guess I'm being lazy today. And instead of walking out to the dome and picking some that I got growing in there, it has good flavor, but it's a little watery. Um, where the flavor's not as potent as the stuff I grow, and I love it. That the boys like it in the soups and uh, salads that I put together. So we'll see if they notice. I'm gonna chop this up. Now these are gonna go in with the onions. Okay, next I wanna show you how to use this uh, old fashioned, I think it's called a grater. <laughs> I can't remember what it's called, heck. My mom used to use this, and I actually really remember using it um, when I got a little bit older and I had a babysitter. Um, and you have to be really careful. Don't get your fingers. This gets really sharp. You could also use a uh, food processor, but I kind of like using this. It brings back old memories, and that's always a good thing. Nothing like remembering great times years ago, especially when it comes to food. And I'm so thankful to have had great people in my life to learn different tricks and how to cook things like that. Now, this goes in my compost because I do not want to get my finger on this. It gets so sharp and um, nothing wrong with that. So you will be surprised how far two carrots go. Like, all right, here we go. Oh, yay. I would, if I were to guess, I'm thinking that's a little over, a little over a cup worth of carrots, and that's just fine. How beautiful 
are those and it smells really good actually. I like to use my uh, stock pot lid on my pressure cooker. I want to show you I already dumped the carrots in. The onions and the celery look amazing. In fact after I cut the cabbage up I'm gonna go ahead and add some garlic to this. So we're gonna let that sit while I quickly cut the cabbage. I'm gonna use that big old awesome knife. First you want to make sure you get the center out of the cabbage. And there's a little hard spot right here. You can kind of see. Um, some people do go ahead and use that part, but I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. Um, very carefully. Holy smokes. All right, so that can go in the compost. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut these up because um, I don't want stringy pieces in the soup. Um, I cut it just like this and maybe make about inch or half inch sections of the cabbage. And let's see how this looks. Just like that, see? Looks really good. It's gonna cook down nice. And isn't that crazy how far a little bit of cabbage goes? <laughs> I have to remember to put my fingertips under. <laughs> I remember learning that on a Food Network video years ago. I haven't watched the TV shows in a while, but that was something. I think Bobby Flay had it where you do that. My sister-in-law also taught me how to cut onions up really well and um, use that same method of just kind of tucking your fingers under so you don't, you don't cut them. See? Oop, there's my other knife. All right. Mmm. Chomping away. That's good stuff. All right. I'm going to cut this up. I'll do the little ringlet things here. Playing the soup. Mmm. It's got a real mild, just that flavor of the jalapeno. Only no heat. I like the flavor. I like the flavor of, um, Habaneros too. There's a pepper out. It's got the habanero, but no heat. Uh, you can grow those too, actually. Um, I'll have to share a link with some of the seed links um, to do those. All right, so here we go. I'm thinking I do want a little bit of heat in this. I wonder if I could just put just a little tiny bit of this yellow one in. I might do that, or the orange habanero. I'm just going to do a little tiny... <laughs> be careful just a little bit and I'll tell you I did this the other day in a soup I think it was the potato soup and you could taste the faint heat and a little bit of that habanero just a little bit all right oh this smells so good I love these okay all right now I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the pot with the rest of the goodies oh this looks so yummy all right we're gonna go ahead and put the peppers in Peppers. Boom, boom, boom. A little bit of cabbage with it. And I also need to add the green beans that are frozen. <laughs> Here's the frozen green beans. And I do need a little bit of garlic. I've been using my uh, jarred my jar garlic but i found this the other day at aldi and boy i'll tell you what this is yummy a little dab will do ya it's got some great flavor and i can i'll make sure that gets blended in good oh you can smell the nice garlic scent and the onions it smells so yummy all right i'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit of that broth I put together. We're gonna end up adding roughly, um, all together with liquid, it's gonna be about four to five cups, okay? Um, this was roughly a tablespoon and a half of the uh, broth that I use. Use your own discretion um, if you don't use that type of paste broth. Um, you basically want 
about two cups of broth once it's complete and the rest is water with the tomato juice that we're going to add the tomatoes the, the juice that's in the stewed tomatoes we're going to put in in a minute here i just wanted to put that that liquid in there to kind of make sure that garlic's blended in good and all those yummy flavors are nice and married together there yummy i am making quite a mess in my kitchen today yikes all right now i'm going to add the tomato this smells super yummy. This was a new one I found at uh, Aldi, as I mentioned earlier. It smells really good. It's got a nice fresh tomato. I guess I could have used some of the tomatoes that I can this year, but I'm just using what I have on hand. Plus these are fire roasted. So I think they're gonna really taste amazing with the peppers I've added to this. Doesn't that look beautiful? Look how pretty that is. It's a pretty soup. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add that cabbage that we cut up. Here's the cabbage. Now remember, cabbage has a lot of water in it too. So that will end up adding to this uh, stew as well, or soup. All right, so I'm gonna leave that like that. Now, I've only added about two cups of water with the, bro the broth. You, I wanna note that you could also use a low sodium broth um, if you wanna cut your sugar, your, excuse me, if you wanna cut your salt intake. I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple more cups of water to this before we put the lid on and cook. Here we go. Water. Look at that. That's perfect. It came right up to my line on my pressure cooker. Um, make sure you follow your directions if you're using an Instapot. Um, also, the recipe on my blog with these ingredients is using a stock pot, which is the same thing. You would just have it. Now you would put the lid on and cook it down on the stove. But with the pressure cooker, we can cut the time in half and um, it also locks in all that great nutrition uh, using the pressure cooker uh, method. Uh, it's been scientifically tested and all that. You can read up on that. I do have chicken, rotisserie chicken I'm gonna put in this, but I'm gonna wait until the soup is done because the rotisserie chicken is already cooked. So I kinda just want this to marry all together and you can just leave it like this, meatless. I'm just adding chicken because we have it and the boys like meat. So here we go. I almost forgot pepper. <laughs> I love pepper. Put your, follow your directions of your appliance that you're using. And I'll show you. Goes on very easy like this. And it's all set to go. Sealed, ready to go. Now my power pressure XL actually has a setting for soups and stews. And oops, I got heat on. So I'm gonna go ahead and just choose that. Now for 10, I'm gonna actually do 12 because I like my cabbage to get cooked really well. And I'm also gonna release this quicker. So I can add the chicken, so I want it to get as much as I can. It's going to count down and go ahead and cook, and I can pick up a little bit of a mess. I didn't make too big of a mess, just a little. I could have been a little neater, but it's actually a lot easier using a one-pot method like this. Um, all right, so I'm going to let it cook and get some chores done here. All right, so there it is. I went ahead and I released the um, pressure cooker lid right after the 12 minutes were done. And at this time is when, if you're gonna add chicken, the rotisserie chicken to it, that's what I'm gonna do now. But you don't have to do that, it's up to you. I actually have microgreens. So I'm gonna put a, a little bit of my spicy microgreens on top. And yum! I hope you try this recipe.